Well, this is a little bit strange, a short video. We've been doing so many long ones recently, 20 to 30 minutes, that it feels weird to do a short one, but that's what this is. Moreover, it's also an old actuarial exam to a problem, exercise 5.2.2S. The S indicates an old, it's an old actuarial exam problem. These are concepts that you should know for the actuarial exam too on financial math. Just like in the last video, we'll be talking about dollar-weighted and time-weighted rates of return. The goal in this problem is to find the dollar-weighted, also known as money-weighted, rate of return for a fund after we solve for an unknown deposit based on a given time-weighted rate of return. And it is a pretty quick video, pretty short problem. We can solve it fairly quickly here. You're given the following information about an investment account over the course of a single year, you can see here. January 1st, July 1st, December 31st of a single year, we've got the value in the fund immediately before any deposits. There's only one deposit at July 1st, halfway through the year at um, deposit value is X. We're told that over the year, the time-weighted rate of return is 0%, and the dollar-weighted or money-weighted return is Y, and the goal is to calculate Y. Okay? You may want to see, based on the last video, if you can pause this video and solve this within a few minutes yourself. I'm going to go ahead and solve it now. I will draw a timeline, but it's, it's simple enough you probably wouldn't have to. I'm marking off time and years, but really, for the, especially for the time-weighted rate of return, the, the actual times themselves don't matter, which is why the time-weighted rate of return is kind of a misnomer. It's kind of misnamed and confusing because of that. It really doesn't matter that this uh, deposit is halfway through the year for the time-weighted rate of return. But anyway, the value at time zero is 10, and that value you can see grows to 12 over the course of a half year. Let me draw an arrow and a 12 up here. Then we make a deposit of x at time 0 0.5 July 1st. And so the balance, the value immediately after that deposit is 12 plus x. And then um, that amount grows, or I guess in this case decays, down to x over the second half of the year. Okay, So there is a positive return during the first half, but a negative return during the second half. That's a nice way to conceptualize this. Now, what is the time-weighted rate of return? you got to think about it in terms of growth factors. It grows from 10 to 12 over the first half year. The ratio 12 over 10, or 1.2, is the growth factor over the first half year. Growth factor over first half year. In other words, it's grew by 20%. The effective uh, semi-annual rate of return here for the first half year was 20%. Then, for the time rate of, return, rate of return, you multiply that by the growth factor over the next period of time. And again, the fact that it's a half year in both cases is actually irrelevant. So really calling it time-weighted is kind of confusing. But anyway, it grows, so to speak, from 12 plus x to x, meaning it really decayed. The growth factor is really going to be less than 1. It's going to be the ratio x, the ending value, divided by 12 plus x, the beginning value, on July 1st, right after that deposit. This is going to be the growth factor for the second half year. I'm calling it growth factor, but it really is less than 1, and so in a sense it's also a decay factor. All right, the product of those thing, two things is going to be the growth factor over the entire year. If I subtract 1 from that, that will be the time-weighted rate of return. Time-weighted rate of return is the product of all the growth factors minus 1. And that's given to be 0%, so I set this equal to 0. That's going to allow me to solve for x, and once I have x, then I can figure out the dollar-weighted rate of return. So it's an equation to solve for x. Um, we can add 1 to both sides. We can simplify a little bit. We get 6x over um, 5 times, in parentheses, 12 plus x would equal 1. That would imply 6x equals 60 plus 5x. Uh, subtracting 5x from both sides, that would imply that x equals 60. Okay, so the x value is 60. I can go ahead and plug that in here if I like. That's 60 now, and this whole thing here is 72, and this is going to be a 60 here. 
The goal now is to find y, which is the dollar rated or money rated rate of return. It probably would have been better to use the letter i for it. But I'll go ahead and use the letter y like they used. So what do you do for the dollar weighted or money weighted rate of return? It's really like an internal rate of return, a yield rate, except you use simple interest. You usually only think about this over the context of a single year where simple interest is a good approximation to compound interest, but it does give you a simpler equation to solve. So we've got the value of 10 that's going to accumulate over the whole year. So it gets multiplied by 1 plus i, or in this case 1 plus y. And then we have the deposit of x at time 0.5, it is important for the dollar weighted or money weighted rate of return that the time is halfway through the year. That value x, which gets deposited, is in there for a half year, so it gets multiplied by 1 plus 1 half times the interest rate, 1 half times the dollar weighted rate of return, 1 half y. Those amounts have to accumulate to the ending balance, which is x. So this has to set set that equal to x and solve for y. We know what x is. x is 60. So this can now be simplified pretty easily and solved for y very quickly and we'd be done. Multiply the 10 through, we get 10 plus 10y. Multiply the 60 through, we get plus 60 plus 30y and we have a 60 here. Those 60s will cancel. We're going to have 40y equals negative 10. So y is negative 1 fourth negative 0.25, in other words, a negative 25% dollar weighted or money weighted rate of return. Okay, so it is a pretty quick problem. You can look it over here. There was the givens up there, find the time weighted rate of return in terms of x, solve for x, and then plug that in to find the ultimate dollar weighted rate of return. In this case, the time rated rate of return is 0%, but the dollar weighted or money weighted rate of return is negative.